Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be potting up two different arrangements for a sunny location. And these are going to be very simple. I'm only going to be using three or four plants per arrangement. And Erin and I want to run an experiment. So we're going to call it Flower Alley. We got 10 of the same containers. These are the 14 inch Garland Jardinier from Unique Stone. And I chose this pot on purpose because one, I like this kind of natural color. I also like the understated beauty. And it's so it's beautiful on its own, but it doesn't take from what's going on on top. I really want the plants to be what shines in this experiment. We're going to set them all up on drip and it's just, it's going to be fun just to show you guys progress through the season because some of these things I've grown before and I have experience and I will share what I know about those plants. Some I've never grown before and I'm going to be pairing some things together that I never have. So I think it'll be just a fun learning experience for me and I hope for you guys as you watch this. Um, now this is going to be kind of more inspiration, I guess, for next year's plant choices because you won't be able to see, I mean, maybe you want to follow along and plant some of the same things this spring along with us and just see how it goes. Um, or, you know, maybe you want to wait and see how they do for us. But we are going to link down below a couple of videos from last year. We did a project along our fence line where Aaron and I planted up a whole bunch of different containers all differently. And we did a couple update videos of after we had initially planted them. So if you want to check those out, definitely a lot to learn from that experience or that experiment there. So anyway, those will be linked down below. So the first thing I have to do, uh, because this is not the end location where this is gonna be staying, is I'm going to run drip to this pot. It won't be connected to anything right now, but at least it'll be in place. So what I do is this is just quarter inch black poly. I'm running a piece out the bottom, giving myself a generous amount here to work with. And then I'm going to cut it here. And then I've got a quarter inch straight coupler. Just looks like that. And I'm going to be putting that in the end of this drip tube here. And then this is how we've decided to run our drip this year. This is quarter inch poly again, but this has drip emitters every six inches that emit 0.65 gallons per hour. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna kind of see how much it takes to ring around this pot about this. So that's one, two, three, four, five drip holes. And I wanna make sure every pot has the exact same amount of drip holes. So I'll just attach this right here to the coupler. And then we're gonna use a goof plug, which looks very similar to the coupler, but there's no way for the water to get out. We'll just put that right on the end. And so this is just gonna dangle out the side or the back of the pot until we're all done planting. And then I will kind of twist it around the plants and get it all set. So now I need to fill it up with soil. That looks just about perfect. And then we're gonna add some slow release fertilizer, probably like two and a half-ish tablespoons and work that into the top layer of soil. Okay, so for this first arrangement, it's going to be utilizing all things which I've grown but I've not put together before. The first thing, this is actually gonna become our thriller, so our biggest plant in this arrangement. This is called a Wicked Witch Coleus. It's part of the Color Blaze series so they can take sun or shade. I had a chance to grow these both in the landscape and in containers last year, and they did fantastic in both locations. Now, my experience with these is that they get enormous, especially if they're getting a lot of sun and enough water. Uh, in our area, we're very dry and hot, so we do have to make sure to give them supplemental water in the afternoons if it's a very, very hot day. Um, but if they're getting like morning sun and protection in the afternoon, uh, like filtered sun or something like that, uh, they usually don't need any supplemental watering. It'll be different for everyone though, depending on if you get rain uh, and that sort of thing. So these grow two to three feet tall. Like if you were just to let it go in the ground, now it's not gonna have as much room in this container to do that. Uh, so I don't expect it maybe to get as big, but you can trim these very easily. And to do that, you just go in and just pinch them off wherever you want them to kind of stay. And then they will um, form new branches from there, two new branches in fact, and it'll make it a bigger, thicker, fuller plant. Uh, but the color blaze coleus, uh, have been bred to where they don't bloom. They may bloom, but it'll be way at the end of the season. Um, so they're not something that you have to continually deadhead because normally we go grow coleus for the leaves, not for the bloom so much. So I'm just gonna kind of put that one, do I want it toward the back? Like, do I want it to fill in here? That's the question here. I think I'm gonna, this is all gonna be very interesting, you guys. The next plant, is called heated up yellow gallardia. Um, so this is actually, there are gallardias that are perennial and this one is a zone eight. 
So there are some that are hardier, um, but these are grown as an annual. And what I noticed the difference between these and the perennial is that these just kept on going all season. I grew this one and the scarlet last year and they were just, they were wonderful plants. The pollinators were really attracted to them because they're so brightly colored. And I think this is a really pretty contrast of color right there. Now this one, can't remember, grows one to two feet tall. So this is kind of my next layer down right here. So this plant will be like boom back here and then this will be our nice second story layer. First story layer, this would be second story, right? Make sure I've got soil tamped in around each one of their root balls. And then my last plant is a super bells that I think will bring a huge pop of color. It's called a dreamsicle. Isn't this just like a really pretty warm color display? Like this one will take you deep into autumn until a frost takes your coleus. Uh, but this will provide a lot of color until that happens and it'll look really appropriate for that time of year. And this, in the spring, I always try to remember to plant some things that will lend themselves to that season instead of all like pastel colors and pinks, which I am drawn to, but I always appreciate having these in the landscape. So this will be our spiller plant. So that is it for this arrangement right here. I'm super excited to see what this one does. Uh, let's see, so now we've got our drip here. So I am just going to feed it around all the plants. I'm gonna probably need some landscape staples to tack it down. We used to do uh, the drip like a cross when we got up into the a cross coupler, when we got up into the pot, and then we would take off in three different direction with more black poly and then emitters on the end of each one of those pieces of black poly. But I feel like we're gonna get better coverage um, with this new method. So we'll be letting you guys know what we think of that as well. So I'm gonna remove this pot and get set up for my second one. Got the drip run to this container already, filled it with soil, put my slow release fertilizer in it. So now it is ready for plants. I'm going to be using four different plants in this one instead of just the three. And this one I am using some pinks, but it kind of looks a little bit more on the warm side of things, um, a little bit more tropical. And there's one plant in here I have never grown before. This one I have though, this is called the Truffula Pink Gomfrina. Now we planted this last year in our landscape and it was an absolute beast of a plant. So I honestly, like, it'll be interesting to see what it does in a container when it's competing for root space with other things because ours got enormous. I think the tag says that, yeah, they grow 22 to 28 inches tall, which mine grew at least that tall, and they were very big around. Um, they are very drought tolerant. They attracted pollinators like crazy. And I actually, because the flowers are so great to dry, I um, dried a bunch, made a wreath out of them, which I still have, totally forgot to put out for Valentine's Day, which I had it planned on doing, um, but it still looks as good as the day that I put it together, uh, which is really fun to have plants that you can harvest blooms from and use like that. So this is most definitely going to be our centerpiece plant right here. And this one, I mean, honestly, like you could put just one of these in the center of a container. And I think very quickly you would have one beautiful looking container, just kind of a mono with one type of plant. It would be really pretty. So there's a suggestion for you. This second plant is the one I've never grown before. So this is an Alternanthera. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it's called Plum Dandy. And this one grows 10 to 16 inches tall. So this will be our second layer down. And I just love the leaf structure. I think the undersides are as beautiful as the top. They're kind of like on the top, a greenish purple, like a dark green with purple, a purple hue. And then the stems are kind of a pinkish purple there. So I'm excited about this one. The first time I actually saw it or noticed it enough that it stood out to me was on Mackinac Island last year. I saw a container with dark red zinnias and this, and it was the most gorgeous thing. I think we even showed it in one of the tours. If we did, uh, we'll see if we can pop a picture up on the screen, but it really struck me. Um, and I was really excited to get my hands on some this year. So that's our second plant. I may have added a little too much soil. We'll see in the end here. On this side here, I'm gonna be adding a super tunia called Supertunia honey. And this is what's gonna bring kind of the interesting depth to this container, I think. When these uh, come out, they are a different color than they are when they age. So they kind of go from a pink 
um, to an apricot, to a yellow, to a mustard. I think they're really gorgeous with this plant. And we'll see, like the super bells I'm using is a little bit on the warm side of pink to me. Um, but I think it's gonna be a really interesting combination. And that's what this whole experiment is about. And the super tunia honey is not as vigorous as a Vista, like a bubble gum or a silverberry. So I think it'll be happy in this container with these other plants. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take a handful of soil out and put in a little bit too much. Use that in my next container. Okay, and then the next plant here is a super bells called Strawberry Punch. And I'm purposely putting it on this side because this is pink, so I wanted my two pinks to be kind of opposite one another. I think that the Strawberry Punch, the throat is a darker color and it looks really beautiful with the plum dandy there. Now this is going to be um, interesting as well because typically I do not have really great luck putting super bells and super tunias together uh, because they have vastly different growing habits. In my opinion, in my experience, super bells tend to like to get down on the dry side a little bit. Super tunias like a little bit more consistency. So it'll just be really interesting. So that is our second arrangement for today. So both of these won't look like, I mean, they're, they're beautiful, the plants are beautiful, but they won't look full and like lush for probably the next two or three weeks. They'll start to really fill in. We've got some consistently warm temperatures coming, so it'll be fun, really fun to show you guys updates. Um, so now I'm going to get my drip in place. I hope this type of drip works. I'm really excited about it because it's so much easier than messing with all those emitters. Three landscape staples and it just tacks it right down into place. These containers will probably sit in the greenhouse for a day or two until we decide exactly where they're gonna go out in our garden. We've got a couple different ideas, but haven't landed on one exactly yet. And I do have eight more of these to plant up, which we will show you in videos just to talk through the plants and give you ideas hopefully for, or inspiration on what to put together in containers. And then once we have them all set up outside, we'll give you kind of a full tour. So you can see exactly what they all look like as a before shot and then we'll give you updates. We'll do update videos throughout the season and it'll be a very interesting experiment. I'm uh, expecting some successes and some fails and I hope it's just a really good learning process. I know it'll be a good learning process for all of us. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful just seeing maybe some more simple arrangements come together and we will have some more of them soon for you guys. So thanks so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.